talk about restorative justice. So there's a quote here, all violence is an attempt to achieve justice or undo injustice. Meaning we're trying to do something because we feel we've been wrong. Now I just recently, I have adopted this, adapted this to mean, to, I added a third one. All violence is an attempt to either achieve justice, undo or reverse injustice, or to cover up injustice. People will commit violence if they're trying to cover up something that they did wrong. Okay, so we've, we've touched on this idea of justice. How do we bring about accountability? Okay, when someone has been harmed and been in, injured. So what are the processes? What can we use? I'm going to skip some since we're running a little bit late. I'll skip some of my uh, slides. But we want to find something that is, has the potential for bearing good fruit. Because if we get into a cycle of revenge and retaliation, or if we respond with revenge, usually what happens is it just continues, it perpetuates itself. So then you have respect, and then they go, and then the other person says, well, you did this, or you did that to my brother, or my uncle, or whoever, and then it becomes this dangerous cycle. So restorative justice is something that um, has come out of the, it came out of the U.S. as an attempt to correct the criminal justice system in the United States, which was excessively punitive and also racially problematic. And people felt that <clears throat> it was ineffective. Okay, people were not really being held properly accountable for things that they had done. Okay, that was, there's also a cultural element to this, and I'm going to go through this. Uh, I think I already mentioned this. The legal system is sort of like institutionalized conflict. You have lawyers fighting lawyers in court. And that is something that came out of the Western system that developed. There were some reasons, some good reasons it developed, but it was not what existed in the Philippines. So the, the current system was imported from Spain through the Código Penal, and uh, that was extended uh, across the, the colonies, even through the American occupation. They revised that uh, in 1927. Uh, it, it was turned into the revised penal code, and it's still the same. So it's the current Philippine Revised Penal Code is simply based on the Spanish uh, Codigo. So that's very interesting. Now the, the implementation is, of course, adjusted. So when we say, what is the cultural element? What does a cultural process look like? How do we tap into, we talk about tapping into the strengths of the community or the culture. How do we do that? So, in, uh, in Davao, one of the indigenous communities that is still retains the cultural process of justice, or customary law, as it's called, is the Atamonobo tribe. And there's a story of a, um, three Atamonobo men who were out harvesting bamboo and rattan in the forest outside of the city, and they were, uh, they were discovered by some army, Philippine army soldiers, okay? They thought that they were NPA rebels, and so they captured them, and then they beat them up. And afterwards, they realized this army unit was based in their village, and so they realized that these men were not rebels, they were just civilians who were, you know, guys out harvesting in the, in the mountains. So they also realized they would lose their credibility with the village where they were based. So they went to the tribal chief and they said, the commanding officer said, we made a mistake. We, this was not right. We will, are willing to abide by your customary or your cultural justice process. 
And so the tribal chief consulted, and he said, okay, we will find you nine horses, nine horses for this, uh, what you did to, the, to our, uh, our people. So the, the Philippine army unit would have to pay nine horses. Why nine horses? Three horses per victim. There were three victims, okay? So he said, one horse, why three? One horse is for the sakit. That's the pain and suffering, right? One horse is for the kalag, or the kaluluwa, the soul of the person, of the victim. And the third horse is for the ulaw, or the hiya, the shame. So in the cultural sense of justice, the pre-Spanish, pre-colonial, indigenous, Filipino sense of justice, it would include not just the physical, but the spiritual and the social. And it would be done in a way that is a community process and really seeks to restore the community and restore the individuals in the community. So that has almost disappeared in many ways. But the values, culturally, the values are still there. We would say, even for us in Manila, these three things, we would like to see any justice process respond not just to the sakit, but also to our spirit and to the social impact. Because we are social people, right? We are always thinking about how do we maintain our relationships and our harmony. So that's based on this indigenous approach. So the values are there, the processes are not there anymore. Because the process is illegal, has become a Western legal process. Sadly, that legal process is also the process of most school discipline codes most, you know, human resource or work, um, you know, disciplinary boards, they still use a very legalistic approach and they're not accounting for these cultural values that we have. So restorative justice, so this is, and this is true in many Asian countries. So social attachment, honor, harmony, we think interconnecting, integrating, that's the thought process. It's not this, it's not this abstract, like, you broke the law, so we have to punish you. So it's this relational approach and a community-focused approach. Okay, this relational approach is flexible. Traditionally, elders would be, like I said earlier in the day, you could not be a good tribal leader if you did not know how to solve conflicts. It's one of the basic criteria for becoming. You want to apply for the job? You have to be able to do these things. So restorative justice is like bridging that cultural approach with our current modern system. Because the, the punitive or the colonial justice system, the legal system, basically asks three questions. What law was broken? What rule was broken? Who did it? And how should they be punished? Okay, straightforward. That's we have the law. Follow the law. A restorative justice approach, which would be similar to a cultural approach, is We'd ask, what is the harm cause? And we can define that harm very broadly. How will the harm be repaired? How will we make it right? And who is responsible to repair that harm? Now, you, you might step back and say, well, that seems like common sense. Yes, it is common sense. <laughs> we have lost, but you know, what we knew traditionally, even might, you know, you might, your parents might have said when you were a kid, look, if you broke that, you have to fix it or you have to pay for it. No? I mean, so this is sort of bringing that back into our systems and saying our systems are disconnected. So we can look at this in, you know, as a parent and how I parent all the way up to our justice system and how politically and socially we, we operate. Okay. Jose Rizal wrote, speaking through the father of Chrysostomo in Nolimi Tanghere. One does not correct one wrong by committing another. If I kill the head of a family, if I make a woman into a, a widow and happy children into orphans, will I have satisfied eternal justice if I let them hang me? What about the widow and children? My conscience tells me I should replace as much as possible the person I've murdered and dedicate myself completely for my whole life to the welfare of the family whose misfortune I have created. So this, this character in the story is the one who represents sort of the best in the traditional Filipino 
culture. And he was the one who, you know, who was killed. So we see that this is not just a, a, you know, a Mindanao thing that I picked up from Mindanao, but across the Philippines, this is embedded in our culture. And that is a very quick summary of restorative justice. So I'll leave, I'll leave us with this. Um, and I want us to think about, in terms of restorative justice, this would be the activity. If you're ever, when you're involved in a situation where harm has been caused, where there's conflict and it results in people being damaged, you know, offended, violence being done, then instead of, instead of just approaching it through a legalistic or just looking at, you know, throw the book at them, what are the rules? We can ask these questions, those restorative justice questions. What is the harm caused? How is it impacted? What, what do they need out of this? And how will those impacts and harm be repaired? And then I put in this, I always add this, what are the strengths of those involved? So even if you have a victim and offender, say you have someone stole something, okay? So the, the offender the, is responsible to repair that, to replace it. And they might need to do something. But we, we also assume that the offender has assets. He has strengths that we need to build on. Just because he did something wrong doesn't mean they have lost their humanity. No? So the restorative justice approach humanizes. It humanizes our practice and our process of justice. It helps us reclaim that. What we have culturally, what we have spiritually as Christians, we believe this. And this is something that brings the humanity back into our system of justice. And it avoids that cycle of just vengeance and revenge that we sometimes just legalize by saying, oh, it's a court case. And it gives us a way out of that cycle. So that's what I would like to close with. I think this is something that the Philippines as a nation needs desperately at this time. I, I'm concerned about this at the national level. I'm very concerned about what's happening. And I believe we don't need uh, we, do, we don't need more punishment. We need restoration. We need healing in our communities. And I think it's our job as leaders, as people in whatever role we have, whether even if we're not formally in leadership, to promote these kinds of things because it's part of who we are as a community. It's a part of restoring and rebuilding our community.